Hi guys, it's Katie back with another episode of my vlog and I am so excited today because we have finally put together the tutorial for my indigo dyeing process. So I'm going to walk you guys through the steps that I take to take the bound up shibori pieces and dye them with indigo to achieve results like the backdrop you see behind me. I had a little help this time, uh, camera work done by my kids, Henry and James, so thanks to them. And I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. All right, we are all ready to start dyeing. I prepared my vat of indigo according to the instructions on the box. I told you guys like to use that um, jacquard indigo kit that you can get a lot of places. Um, so I prepared my indigo bucket about an hour ago and I've been letting it sit and I just um, scraped the sort of scummy stuff off the top of the bucket and I am ready to start dyeing. So uh, Henry, if you could turn the camera and show, here are the prepared pieces um, that I'm gonna be dyeing today. There are so many pieces here, I'm gonna split it into two batches um, and we're gonna go that way. Now I have gone through and I've gotten every piece wet I fully submerged them in water and I squeezed the excess water out. This is so that they, um, we are removing any excess air bubbles from inside the fabric by getting them wet. The whole deal with the indigo dye is it reacts with, um, excuse me, oxygen contact. So we want to reduce the amount of oxygen going into the vat, low oxygen environment in the vat, then we take the pieces out and let them oxidize in the air. And that's when they're going to turn that amazing indigo color. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start collecting up my pieces and putting them into the dye vat. I want to submerge them completely. And as you can see, it's actually green, like I said. And as I put each piece in, I'm going to squeeze them under the level of the dye just a little bit to encourage the dye to really soak in there. And everybody's going to want to float because as much as I tried to get the oxygen out, ooh, look at all those bubbles coming out. Of course, I didn't get it all out. So after I get everybody in here, I'm going to have to sit with either my hands or a stick in the vat, preventing everybody from coming up above the surface of the dye. And again, you can see everybody's taking on that green color, which is the unprocessed indigo. When we take them out of the dye vat, they're gonna be that bright green color at first, but then they're gonna turn into that familiar indigo color that we love so much. Oh, I farted out a big fart. <laughs> I'm really trying not to put any oxygen in here, but of course it's impossible because here we are in an environment and breathing oxygen. Um, Wow, I wonder what indigo's dying in space in a total non-environment would be. What do you think, Henry? Henry doesn't want to talk on camera. All right, that's fine. He can be the silent cameraman. Okay, so that is a lot. I probably, well, I think I got about half in here. All right, so now I got to kind of keep, keep my hand in here and keep everybody under the level of the indigo, um, which is a little boring to look at for the next three minutes. Um, Henry, why don't you pan over and show the other um, bound up pieces there again. So let me take a closer look at those pieces. These ones that are in the net bags are gonna be that kind of blue cheese sort of random design. Um, the pieces that look like spiky corals are um, bound up with the spider web design. Um, uh, I'm not sure what that, oh, that was from the first tutorial I did over there. These other ones uh, closer to your feet, Henry, are one big spider web that has that pink binding on it. And um, the one right above that that has the little tape flags is the one that I did in my uh, tutorial just the other day, that Ori Nui teeth style of binding. So that's, those are the befores on what those ones are gonna come out to look like. Um, so my process for doing this dye is uh, I do four minutes in the dye bath and then 20 minutes out. Show the dye, not me. <laughs> um, I do four minutes in the dye bath and then 20 minutes out to oxidize. We're about halfway through the dye bath right now. This needs another two minutes before we're gonna take them out and put them um, uh, out on this, uh, what, do, what have I got here? Oh, it's cut up garbage bags on the floor to protect the basement floor from indigo, which of course I've already spilled indigo on the not protected part of the floor, but that's how it goes. 
<laughs> um, and then I think what we'll do is we'll have Henry show you guys the oxidation of this first round of stuff that's coming out of the dye vat because it looks so cool. And then after we have done that, I will have him uh, put this thing on warp speed and let's make a time lapse of the whole rest of the process because like I said, it's gonna be four minutes in the dye, 20 minutes out of the dye. And then I'm gonna repeat that four times for each of these groups of fabric. Now, because I have two groups of fabric and each one has to oxidize for 20 minutes, I don't have to do one round all the way through its four cycles and then start the second round. I'm gonna be able to alternate them with each other. One will go into the dye bath while the other set is out and oxidizing. So, uh, looks like we're about 40 seconds away. Oh, there's the clock. <laughs> From taking these guys out. So Henry, be ready, because once I start taking these out, I'm gonna want you to focus on the actual dyed piece sitting on the black plastic on the floor so we can see it change color okay so you pick whichever your favorite one is and focus on that and just stay on it so that we can watch it turn from that bright green sort of fluorescent highlighter color that it is right now into the beautiful indigo that we are going to have it be in the end and like i said each of these is going to go through four times you can do it one time if you want but you get a really light blue um i found for to get the color that I really want on the fabric, I need to do four trips through the dye bath. All right, let's take these guys out and see what they look like. As I take each one out, I'm also going to squeeze out any excess dye because I don't want to bring all the dye out of my vat. I wanna keep it in my vat so I can keep using it. So there is one piece, bright, bright green. Why don't you stay on that while I unload the rest of these and see if we can note it. Changing colors before our very eyes. See how it's getting darker already? Henry's nodding. He doesn't even want to be heard on this video. It's so cute. He's willing to run camera for me, but he sure doesn't want to be on camera, which I get. I mean, I was 12 once. I helped my mom with her projects, but I didn't want to look, compare those two. The one that just came out with the one that came out even 30 seconds ago, all right? And so because we're trying to get this exposed to oxygen, with some of these ones that are kind of more bunched up, what I'm gonna have to do is really like spread them out like that. Oh, look at all that that's going on in there. So that the different sides of the fabric can see the air and really get exposed. I like to flip them all over, spread out any folds. Oh, cool, this one's your t-shirt, Henry. That's gonna be a good one. Isn't that amazing how that color changes that fast? I love it. Okay, we'll put this brand new one right next to this one that's been out for a little while. Look at the difference between those. It's crazy. Ooh, these long ones are hard to take out. There's a lot of squeezing to do. And of course, this makes kind of a big splattery mess all over your floor, so it's good to have a space it's got a concrete floor that you don't necessarily care about staining. Of course, I still put down this plastic because I don't want to make my floor a huge mess if I can avoid it. Oh, there's Jimmy's shirt. Look at that. That looks cool. Oh, another good one is maybe count how many pieces you put into the vat so you can know if you lost any at the bottom. If you have any really small pieces, sometimes you can lose them down at the very bottom of the vat. Um, and I don't have like elbow length opera gloves. So I don't really want to stick my arm all the way in this vat because that's gonna flood my glove with indigo dye, which would suck. <laughs> so sometimes I count, I think I counted out 11. How many are here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, 10 in my hand and I see number 11 in the vat. All right, we know we got everyone. First time I did indigo dyeing, I did some really tiny piece and I like totally lost it at the bottom of the vat. I forgot about it. Pretty funny. But, you know, you gotta try it. Learn from some mistakes. Get it figured out. All right. This is the first demo I did, the one that has all the little rocks in it. All right. 
So again, like I was saying, we want to spread these out so that they can really get as much air exposure as possible. So I don't want anything to be sort of bunched up. I mean, things are bunched up because that's the way they're bound up, but I'm gonna unbunch everything and turn things over. As these things are turning dark blue, you'll see when I turn them over, they might have green spots on that underside because that's the side that didn't get that oxygen yet. See? And everybody turned around, turned over, flipped around, all that stuff. All right, these are looking great. So we're gonna let those oxidize for probably another 15 minutes before those are gonna go back in for their second trip through the dye bath. And then meanwhile, I'm going to start the other section of fabric into the dye bath while these ones are waiting. So Henry, why don't you go ahead and hit that warp speed. Here on the time lapse, we have about two hours worth of work condensed into 25 seconds. As you can see, I'm taking the two halves of my total dye pieces in and out of the dye bath four times each. They go in for four minutes and then they sit out oxidizing for 20 minutes. Pretty cool to have the time lapse to get to see this thing so fast because it's so much slower in real life. All right, we are ready to start rinsing out these pieces. Um, some of them, the more complicated the tie up was, the more complicated the undo is. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of these simpler to take out ones because they're going to go fast. Um, and then I will undo the other ones uh, after we end the video. So this one is actually Jimmy's shirt. James Hello. is running camera right now. If you want to say hi, you can. Hello. I'm <laughs> excited for the shirt. Henry was not excited to talk on camera, but James is so, oh man, so excited to see what this shirt looks like. I'm stage shy. Stage shy, not, not video? Not camera shy. Gotcha, I see. I'm not even on <laughs> camera. I'm on audio. All right, well, here is your brand oh. new... Ori t-shirt. Look at that. Pretty cool. So we untie it and then we've got to rinse some of the excess dye out uh, before um, we put it through the washing machine. I'm going to wind up washing everything in the end, but this thing is still discharging a lot of dye. Um, that's part of the reason why I'm wearing gloves uh, again is because I don't want to stain my fingers with how much dye is left in this. But, oh man, that looks so cool. So we'll go ahead and throw that in the washing machine and then we'll go for a nice wash and dry and it will lighten up a tiny bit, but not very much at all. It's going to have those nice dark, dark, dark blues. The back looks a little crazy because it was the inside, but it looks cool too. All right, let's throw this guy in the washer and see what else we got. Let's do one of these crinkly ones because that one is such a fun one to do. Just really quickly. So this is one of those ones where I just sort of smooshed the fabric all up on itself and then put it into a, um, like a produce bag, I think. So pull this out and it looks like this big brick of, an onion bag. of just blue. But then when you open it, suddenly, oh, look at that one. Oh, awesome. Oh, that came out so cool. All right, whoops, I got some of this water. I'm gonna rinse that guy next. I'm not even gonna bother rinsing these ones. I'm just gonna pull out the binding and show you a couple more. So the rubber band ones, you actually have to sit there undoing rubber bands. You can also cut them off, but this one is easy enough. I can just undo it. This is the shirt I made for Henry. Yeah. And whoops, I clearly need some kind of, kind of garbage container over here that I don't have, but uh, Oh, this one's going to be a good one. I can tell already. Oh, it's so much fun to undo these things, you guys. Like I said, some of them are a pain in the ass. I know the one that has all the little rocks in it with the rubber bands is really going to take me a while to undo. Um, but it won't take that long. And what kind of cool results will we get? Oh, that turned itself inside out. I don't know how that happened. But let's see. <laughs> this is... So here is... Henry's new shirt. That's another one of those, just, uh, you know, strategically crunched it up. I had run out of the net bags, so I just did that one up with rubber bands. Oh, that looks great. Oh, man, Henry is going to be so pleased with his shirt. All right, let's see what else we've got. Just a couple more in here. Um, oh, here's one of the ones that I did with a bunch of rubber bands. 
think this was from the very first demo. And you can see it's kind of a pain to take the rubber bands out, but oof, look at that stripe we got there. So this one should be good. I mean, they're all gonna be good. That's I'm the excited. amazing thing. It's, uh, it's like I keep saying, it's really hard to go wrong with this particular technique. I've, there's only been a couple where I've felt actually like disappointed by my results. Um, one of them was just, it didn't come out quite how I expected to. And another one, I, I wasn't disappointed. It came out incredible, but the very first time I did Shibori, I picked this really, really time intensive um, stitching pattern. And I mean, it came out incredible, but it was just so not worth the amount of time that I had put in on it. So I kind of vowed never to make that one again, but watch, I'll go back on my vow and probably make it again, right? You Wait, know, which one is it? Um, I can show you a piece of it. It's on that quilt. I used it all up. It's the one that looks like wood grain. You do all these tiny, tiny little close together stitches and then pull it together and it gets all these beautiful pleats in it. All right, speaking of beautiful, let's see what this guy's looking like. Oh, this is one of those big targets, I think. Yeah. Hey, look at to be that. For a starburst, not a target, whatever you want to call it. Look at that. Looks great, right? Yeah. Awesome. All right, one more. And then we'll make the jump to hyperspeed, but I really wanted to show you guys this one is the teeth one that we've been talking so much about. And we did the tutorial for that one over the course of the last week. And of course, everyone loves this one. And I've just been selling so many masks with this pattern on them. I had to make a bunch more because it was like, are you kidding me? This is the most popular thing. So, whew trying to get this off of here as fast as I can. Like I said, sometimes this process is not a fast one. And um, I do try to set myself up for, you know, making it as quick as possible when it's time to take it all out. But sometimes it does take a little while to get all the bindings undone. But yeah, okay. this is going, this is going all right, right? And then the cool thing is once I'm done with the wrap part, I'm just gonna cut the bindings for the teeth part and it's gonna pop right out. Because I went ahead and I made those um, those little stopper flags, like you guys saw in the last video. It really just makes it a cinch to pull this one out in the end. So we just have to figure out where this thread is all wound around. And again, I could use the scissors to just slice through all the threads, but then I'd have all these tiny little wet, gross, kind of like half covered with dye pieces of thread spaghetti. And I mean, the long ones are kind of bad enough, but they at least stay together. Ooh, there it is all over my glove not coming off all right so there's the the binding whoa pulled off that one but then we have to also undo the stitching on of course the teeth part so i need to look in between these pleats and find the great place to cut this thread of course without cutting the fabric itself there we go and then I should just be able to pull the two little tape flags off the end. And there you see that awesome teeth pattern in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. Looks pretty cool. Oh boy, I'm super excited with this. All right, let's go ahead and jump to hyperspeed for the rest of this, James. So this time lapse is also about two hours worth of work condensed into about 25 seconds. It is very tiring work to do. It's at the end of the day when I've already been doing a lot of physical labor. And of course the pieces are wet, which means they're heavy. And I have to find all the little rubber bands and pieces of string and cut them out of everything. But it is totally worth it. As you guys know, I love the result. So after I tie, untie everything, I wash, dry, and iron it. And then we can finally take a look at what the final result actually looks like. All right, it is the next day after dye day and I have washed and dried and ironed everything. And you guys can see the awesome results that I got from my indigo dye session. Stopping here briefly on each one. Oh, the wind is being helpful. You can see this is the one from the very first tutorial video where I used the rocks and the rubber bands. This is the one from the first tutorial where I folded the fabric up, gathered it and put rubber bands around it. And that's the one from the first tutorial that I called a big target. The 
This one I never showed you guys on a tutorial because I just made it up, but I love how it came out. There's the one from the spider web tutorial. And then here are the guys from the Ori Nui teeth tutorial. And I even made a couple of t-shirts for the kids. I am so pleased with how this stuff came out. Can't wait to do another dye day. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial.